Good morning, everyone. I said good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at Woodland Cemetery in Henrico County as we announce an effort to reclaim, reclaim an important part of our community and history. I'm pleased to be here with several individuals who have been working tirelessly to restore Woodland Cemetery as a place of reverence and honor for those that are buried here. And I want to begin the recognition with two individuals that have worked for many, many years uh, in concert, and that is our supervisors, Mr. Frank Thornton from the Her Henrico Fairfield Magisterial District, Mr. Tyrone Nelson from the Verona Magisterial District. And a true champion in this effort is also Delegate Dolores McQuinn from Virginia's 70th House District, who has done so much work for uh, this cause. We're also joined by Dawn Adams from the 68th and John McGuire from the 56th. Thank you both for being with us. So Woodland Cemetery was established about 100 years ago. During a time of strict segregation, as a cemetery for African Americans. It represents, ladies and gentlemen, the final resting place for about 30,000 members. I want to say that again. 30,000 members of our community. And they include prominent individuals such as tennis champion and civil rights activist Arthur Ashe. You can see his grave right up the hill. And the Reverend John Jasper, founder of Six Mount Zion Baptist Church, and you can see his marker uh, literally up the hill almost at uh, 1 o'clock from, uh, from me. And I want to pause here because there's a, there's a bit of a personal story to this cemetery for me. Uh, you know, I grew up in, in this region, and I had no idea, no idea that cemeteries had been abandoned and history lost. And it was Frank Thornton who took me on a ride about eight years ago as a new county manager. And he showed me the grave of Maggie Walker. And at that time, that grave had not been maintained at all. And from then, that became a bit of a personal um, issue for me the department heads and, and I from the county have been personally in this cemetery. Ben Shepard, our director of public relations and media services, had probably one of the worst cases of poison ivy um, here in number uh, last year. So cemeteries are truly special places, and they deserve to be treated with care and dignity, and Woodland is no different. You know, the work of John Shuck. Where's John? John and Kathleen Harrell. You know, what you all have done, and literally, literally over the years, and uh, Mr. Harris, for everything that you're doing, and, and I think Frank Thornton is going to get into that story. But the challenge here has been one of maintenance and upkeep. Woodland was established without funds for perpetual care. For years, families and volunteers spent countless hours cutting weeds, cleaning vi clearing vines, and uncovering headstones. And up to now, up to now, it has been a never-ending never battle against nature. But that, ladies and gentlemen, will soon change. And with some of those details, I'd like to hand the program over to Fairfield Supervisor, Mr. Frank Thornton. Mr. Thornton. Good morning to everyone. Uh, this is a proud moment for so many of us. Um, <clears throat> let me say this though, Henrico County is proud to support the Evergreen Restoration's efforts to preserve Woodland Cemetery. The county will be doing several things to further this mission. First, Henrico will provide a $25,000 grant to offset the cost of property acquisition. In addition, we will assist and support the group's efforts 
to raise private dollars for ongoing maintenance and care of the grounds. In his seminal work, Built by Blacks, Selton Richardson defines the cemetery as an expression of sentiment, status, and religious faith, as well as the home, businesses, and churches of Richmond. He mentions how a discussion of the architecture of the Black Cemetery in Richmond deserves an appropriate examination. So we have already begun that. Veronica A. Davis, author of one of the few books on black cemeteries in Richmond, after noting the desolate conditions of black cemeteries, said the following, and I quote, we could spend just as much time ourselves lifting a rake, water holes, repairing our cemeteries, and keeping them memorable. And the thing about what she said is that has already begun. So let this be a watershed moment not just for this cemetery, but for other black cemeteries. Just as the Middle Ages had inspired us with the Romanesque church and Gothic cathedrals, we're here this morning to give recognition to the revival of black cemeteries, which are repositories of history and museums. And as I go to my seat, I want to thank uh, Mr. Marvin Harris for having given me a call. And, and actually, he wrote me a letter. Actually, he wrote me a letter. And probably he thought that, you know, as most letters, you know, wasn't going to get much in return. But uh, he told me what his dream was. He told me what he wanted to do. And I thought that was in consonance with revival of black cemeteries. And so I'm sure now that thank each of you for being here this morning. I want each of you to go out and make sure that you tell people what we are doing so we can have more people as part of our team. Thank you so very much. I'll call up now our distinguished person from the House of Delegates, my friend, my friend, Delois McQuinn. Thank you, sir. Good morning and thank you. I said like uh, one of my friends, often say it's a good day to be in Henrico County. Uh, the place that I grew up and the place that uh, have very much been a part of my family's history. And so thank you, uh, John, and to the elected officials who are here. Uh, we certainly do appreciate this moment in time. You know, over the years, um, we have um, worked hard, many individuals. I see John Signer, who's here, and those who are uh, helping with the Evergreen and East End Cemetery. Thank you for the work that you all have done over the years. There's been time and energy into efforts to identify and clean up and provide maintenance, maintenance to sacred burial sites. Uh, for those of us whose ancestors have, in many ways, uh, the cemetery represents the systemic neglect uh, and disrespect that has gone on over the years. And so in an effort to address that widespread uh, disparity that have existed in Virginia regarding the burial sites for so many uh, African Americans, enslaved Africans and African Americans, who've made major contributions to the building and the success of this country. It was in 2017, with the support of so many other individuals, that I introduced a bill, House Bill 1547, to take care of African American cemeteries, to provide perpetual care uh, that were built, those that were built between 1800 and 1900. This bill passed unanim unanimously in the House and the Senate. Then in 2020, I had another bill to pass, H House Bill 1523 that would give the Department of Historic Resources the funding uh, to give care to those African-American cemeteries that are being taken care of. And so no longer will we have to come before the General Assembly because what happened after the first bill passed, House Bill 1547, then there was just an influx of folks across the Commonwealth who was asking that the cemetery in their various localities would be addressed, would receive funds for perpetual care. And so we thought it was a uh, 
uh, the, that the effort to move it to the Department of Historic Resources, the funds there, and so no longer would they have to come before the General Assembly, but through the Department of Historic Resources, they would do the research and then proceed from there. And so we are excited about that. And this cemetery certainly would be one that would qualify. So not only do I want to share that and just thank all of those who have been very much a part of it, uh, uh, Mr. Thornton and Mr. Nelson, uh, my colleagues from the House and, and uh, in the Senate, thank all of those who have been so involved and engaged in helping to make the changes here. And then John, thank you for your efforts because after talking with you and you and Frank, you saw the need to help make certain that this cemetery was given the attention that it needs. And so we're here also today to congratulate my friend, Mr. Harris, uh, with the help of Henrico County on purchasing and, uh, and securing this pro property where most, uh, where many of the historical African cemeteries um, uh, and individuals who are buried here, um, like our native son and first African-American male champion of Wilmington is interred at Arthur Ashe. And so Marvin, thank you so much. Marvin has been so tenacious, uh, engaged, determined that he was going to move forward to make sure, just as the attention we gave to Evergreen and Eastern Cemetery, and others across this Commonwealth, that this one would be on the list as well. And so I worked with him on various projects leading up to this purchase, such as, again, Evergreen and East End. He's been dedicated to making sure that those who are buried in these African-American cemeteries are treated with dignity and respect and they, that they deserve. These are sacred spaces, and we must treat them as sacred spaces. And by, uh, once again, for those who have contributed so much in their life, in their death, we need to contribute some of our time to make sure that we are preparing uh, 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 the next generation to understand how important these spaces are. These are lifelines to our history. And so Marvin, again, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for sticking with it and being determined and committed uh, to uh, providing uh, and, and, and securing resources to make this happen. We congratulate you today and we thank you for all the work that you have done. Thank you. First of all, let me say, that I could not have done this without the help of the people that surround me here. And as I look out and I see the volunteers, the ones that have been with me for the last four and a half years to make this happen, I really appreciate uh, enrichment. They started the process back in 2017 and they stayed with me through the process of making sure that if there's anything I need, to ensure that we actually get these grounds clear, they're there for me. I look out and I see a guy, Al, Al Smith. He has uh, one of the volunteers, he's back here, one of the volunteers that faithfully bring his tract out that actually do the work of about 10 people. But before I thank the rest of the people on the panel, I want to take you guys back on the journey. This journey started back in October of 2015. The class of Maggie Walker High School, 1967, we were sitting around the board table and we decided that we needed to give back to the community. And one of the things came up is that we wanted to reach back out to Evergreen where Maggie Walker was interred. We wanted to make sure we get out there, make sure that her grave site was clear and do as much as possible out there that we could to make sure that the grounds were um, just brought back in a respectful manner. And 10 members of Mega Walker class of 67 decided that we had to do it. And with that, we were on Channel 12, I'll never forget this, Delegate McQueen called in. And I was lucky enough to get that call. And I can hear in her voice that she truly had in her heart that she really wanted to make sure that process went through. And here she is now, four and a half years later, she's with us again. Um, and I can't say enough about that because most of the time when you look in a person's eyes, you can see if they're really, really dedicated and they really want to help and they keep coming back. But as we look around the panel, when I made that contact 
with um, supervisor, Fairfield District Supervisor Frank Thornton. He jumped. I mean, actually jumped at the opportunity to help. He asked me to send him a letter, and with that letter he received, he took it over to the county manager's office. John had me to come in for a meeting, and him and Carrie, his assistant, when they, when I walked into the room, I felt like family. You could feel it that Henrico County was going to be there for us. And with that process, they're here. They started this process along with some of the donors, and Jeannie Ash has also assisted to get us where we are right now with this purchase. I've got to say that we want to bring the family, people, the descendants, back into this process. I talked to one of the guys that had disinterred a family member because he couldn't take this anymore. I reached out to him and said, if he have any additional family members, don't worry about disinterring them. We're going to get this under control. We're going to bring it back to where it used to be with the help of the county. The county, Henrico, has really embraced this project a thousand percent. They make it a lot easier for me to stand up here right now and indicate to the public that we will get this process done. So with that said, Delegate McQueen, Mr. Thornton, um, John, I really appreciate everything you guys have done. Keep up that good work. We're going to need your help in the future. But together, including the community, we're going to make sure that this is done and done right. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's hot. You know, if this feels like a special moment, um, it is a special moment. You know, life is made up of those moments in time where you can either let the moment pass or you can do something special. And with the support of this Board of Supervisors, Mr. Tyrone Nelson, Mr. Frank Thornton, um, we were able to do something with uh, Marvin Harris. Delegate McQuinn, again, thank you for everything that you continue to do because, you know, Henrico has decided that we are going to be part of this project. When we decide something, we execute it pretty darn well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Have a great e uh, afternoon, and we will be here for any questions for any member of the press. Thank you again.